Welcome back, Joseph Kendo here. After covering over 20 weapons planned to be featured in a Resident Evil title without ever making an appearance in game, you'd think there wouldn't be much else to discuss. However, with countless releases and 25 years under its name, this series is no stranger to removed content. As a continuation of part two, here are even more weapons that didn't make the cut in Resident Evil. As the most recent Resident Evil title released earlier this year, we made sure to check if any unused content could still be found in Village. While scouring the files of the game, we came across an unused inventory icon for a G3 pattern rifle, featuring a carry handle and tape wrapped around the stock, lending to its fairly rugged appearance. While it doesn't quite match the aesthetic of the finely decorated or tactical weapons featured in the game, it does share a style similar to the starting handgun. As far as we can tell, there's no physical model of the G3 located anywhere in the game's files, nor are there any unused attachments for the rifle. The only sign of this weapon being intended for use in the game is its leftover inventory icon. As we await the upcoming release of the DLC for Village, perhaps this unused G3 will eventually be made usable by the player. Shown at the TGS and E3 venues of 1999, Resident Evil 3 was presented to the audience as a playable demo from an earlier stage in development. In this demo, players got a sneak peek of new items to be featured in the game, although several would go unused in the final version unbeknownst to them. The most notable of these was Jill's starting handgun, which may depict the earliest known rendition of a Samurai Edge. This low-resolution Beretta was only shown for brief moments during footage gathered at the event, and even made a few appearances in gaming magazines. Even from this crude image, we can recognize this design being different from the retail version, mostly by the appearance of its wood grips, although a keen eye may notice it still retains the Brigadier slide, but that's where the details end since this weapon was never shown from the examined view to our knowledge. Perhaps if the E3 or TGS demos of Resident Evil 3 were publicly available, there would be ways for us to find out more regarding this early handgun. Leading up to the release of Resident Evil 5, several weapons were shown in the second trailer from 2007. As we previously discussed in part one and two of our cut gun videos, these weapons ended up being scrapped in the final version of the game, although we have yet to discuss the assault rifle shown briefly in these early trailers. Like the other weapons, we aren't given a very clear view during the trailer's runtime, but the rifle appears to be a hybrid design, capturing semblance from prolific rifles of the time, and is equipped with several attachments. The attachments seen include an EOTech holographic sight, a side-mounted laser, and an M203 grenade launcher. The only feature from the prototype rifle to remain was the holographic sight, seen equipped on the SIG 556, which may have likely been the weapon to replace this strange, unidentified rifle. We aren't sure if the underbarrel grenade launcher was ever intended to be functional in the game, but as many of you would know, this feature did make it into the follow-up title, Resident Evil 6, as the secondary fire mode for the Bear Commander. Surprisingly enough, within the grand scale of content in Resident Evil 6, only one cut weapon has been found within the files of the game so far, with that exception being a design change to Sherry Birkin's handgun. The triple shot stood as her main sidearm throughout this title, with the model and game being a completely hybridized weapon, known to be standard fare with the rest of the game's arsenal. Within the official art book of Resident Evil 6, both the in-game and original model of the triple shot can be seen together, featuring detailed concept art and even the reasoning behind their change. As stated by Akimoto, since the gun is a three-shot burst type, firing three shots at once, we made it a little on the larger side, but because it was too big for Sherry, a woman, we gave her a sharp custom model. The name Triple Shot comes from the three-shot burst feature. Fortunately for us, the original version is left in the game's files, and when comparing the two, the base gun appears to be mostly unchanged between the opposing models, but the barrel, stabilizer, and red dot sight on the original version appear far larger than the one we got in-game. Contributing to its over-increased size, it appears rather unwieldy as a burst auto weapon in anyone's hands. If you watched our recent video on the Samurai Edge Jill Valentine model, you may remember us mentioning how Jill's Samurai Edge in Resident Evil Remake was not actually depicted as her own custom model, 
but simply as the standard model, calling into question if this was always the intended plan. When taking a look through the files of the game, there are several unused textures for the Samurai Edge, with one of them accurately depicting Jill's custom model, and unfortunately, these textures were never implemented into the game. But oddly enough, the original release of Resident Evil Zero for the Nintendo GameCube does make use of these textures, and as such, the Jill Valentine model can be found here instead. When examining the handgun in Rebecca's inventory, her Samurai Edge appears with features such as the light blue medallion, Kendo Custom Shop engraving, and the matching black finish on the slide and frame of Jill's custom model, although its description makes no mention of this and simply treats it as the standard model. With Rebecca having Jill's model, and Jill having the standard model we expected to see from Rebecca, we're forever stuck with this double inconsistency in the GameCube versions of the game. But in the 2016 HD remaster of Resident Evil Zero, an effort was made to correct this error by updating the Samurai Edge, which now accurately portrays hers as the standard model. Unfortunately, the same treatment was not given to the 2015 HD release of Remake, as the Samurai Edge in Jill's inventory remains unchanged. While Resident Evil Village left players with a rather diverse and memorable set of weapons, one of the most welcome additions to the game was the Winchester Model 1897 in its trench gun configuration. This weapon is highly detailed with extravagant engravings over the entire shotgun and is finished in silver with golden accents. But if you felt like this historical model had something missing, you'd actually be correct, as a matching bayonet was originally planned to be featured in the game. This blade carries over the finely decorated appeal of the shotgun and is elegantly crafted with an eagle's head on the pommel of the grip. While there is almost nothing known about how the attachment would have functioned in-game, this brings us to believe they may have planned to include a bayonet stab, slash, or charge attack with this attachment equipped, or even some form of basic damage increase. There isn't much that would help pinpoint when it was cut during development though, since when the shotgun is extracted from the files, Fortunately, the bayonet is still equipped to the model, but no inventory icon exists to accompany this attachment. Within the great span of unconventional weapons in Resident Evil Outbreak, it would almost seem no item was out of the picture to be used for defense. Naturally, the chemical bottles were included, often found during the stages set within the Umbrella Laboratories. The game features an explosive and acid chemical bottle, both sharing the same color coding of the game's grenade launcher ammunition types. However, two other chemical bottles were planned but went unused. The first chemical bottle was red, which we would expect to have incendiary effects to burn enemies upon impact, essentially serving as a more sophisticated Molotov. The second chemical bottle was blue, whose effects could have likely been nitrogen-based, with the ability to extinguish fires and freeze enemies leading us well into the unused ammo types for the grenade launcher. Resident Evil Outbreak initially planned to feature two additional types of grenade rounds. This specialty ammunition included fire extinguisher rounds marked with a blue cap and gas rounds defined by the green cap. For the gas rounds, this would have been its first reappearance since Code Veronica, and luckily we were sort of able to get them re-implemented, as the data is still present in the Outbreak scenario only. However, as you can see, the animations for aiming and firing are broken, but the effects still work as intended, briefly filling the room with gas just as they performed in Code Veronica. The gas rounds incapacitate all BOWs in the immediate area, knocking them to the ground for a short amount of time, with a high chance of killing whichever enemy was hit directly. As for the fire extinguisher rounds, it seems all of its data was removed and only its item name and inventory icon were left behind. But based on previous games, we can imagine the fire extinguisher rounds were designed to act similar to Resident Evil 3's nitrogen rounds. But this may also help explain the placement of the grenade launcher found in the scenario, Hellfire. In this stage, several of the doors behind fires are fully functional, which seems to imply the flames placed in front of those doors may have possibly been extinguishable at some point. Due to it being an entirely scrapped build of a game, Resident Evil 1.5 has graced us with a large sum of cut content. For Part 3, we have three handguns to showcase that were once planned to be featured in the second Resident Evil. 
In this version, the Sig Sauer P228 was set to be the starting weapon of the forgotten protagonist, Elza Walker, as opposed to Claire Redfield and her starting high power. After selecting Elza to be the playable character, the P228 can be found in her inventory, but it cannot be examined. And performance is exactly what you would expect from the starting handgun in an early RE title, barely capable of shaking the dust off of zombies. To combat this, better handguns were planned to be obtained by playing through the game, instead of the weapon attachment upgrade system used in the finished version of Resident Evil 2. The two character exclusive handguns were a Glock 18 and Beretta Model 93R, but not much is known about which character was destined to get which gun. The performance of the Beretta 93R is what you would expect, behaving similar to other burst auto handguns from the early games, giving the perk of rapid fire, but at the cost of expending more ammunition quickly. Oddly enough, the Glock 18 was meant to be a burst fire handgun as well, despite it never being produced with a burst fire function. While Resident Evil Zero is no stranger to cut guns, we never would have thought to see plans for a new melee weapon and upgrades for the knife. Using Action Replay, we can gain access to a weapon under the name of Knife X, but this knife cannot be equipped and has no inventory icon. Upon examination, the lighter fluid model is shown as a placeholder, and its description reads, The power has been doubled by applying a powerful drug to the knife. Interestingly enough, this chemical can also be found grouped together with the weapon parts under the name Chemical X. From its examination, the description simply reads, When you mix a specific drug. As this statement goes unfinished, this phrase could imply it was meant to be an item crafted by the player, perhaps by the use of Rebecca's chemical mixing set. This ability to upgrade the knife would have been a first for the series, but it was likely scrapped for gameplay balance. Had it not been, this could have led to Resident Evil Zero potentially having a very overpowered knife. The other melee weapon that was planned to be featured was a hatchet. It does have an inventory icon, but it cannot be equipped and features no examined model. Upon its examination, its description reads, an axe that can be held with one hand as a weapon in close combat. We can imagine the hatchet was likely scrapped due to the redundancy of having two different melee weapons that perform the same task though it may have been their way of letting both characters still have access to their own unique melee weapons. For Resident Evil Village, the Model 1851 Wolf's Bane has been one to garner the attention of fans since the game's release. For both its stunning appearance and devastating firepower, it doesn't seem like this was always the intended plan. The original design of the Model 1851 was less decorated and seems to have been planned to be the starting handgun of the game. In the documented short, Making of Resident Evil Village, released by Capcom, several of the clips showcase an earlier version of the Lycan Siege. In this footage, Ethan is armed with a cartridge conversion Model 1851 Navy, rather than the highly decorated Wolf's Bane version. Through this footage, we can see this weapon had far less recoil and an increased rate of fire. This version of the 1851 Navy can also be seen in the hands of Ethan, as his primary sidearm in one of his character concepts. To our knowledge, this original model of the handgun is absent from the game's files, which means this early footage may be the only evidence for this revolver that exists. During the development of Resident Evil 2 Remake, weapons from the original game were redesigned for the 2019 experience, with one of them being the Lightning Hawk that Leon picks up in the RPD, along with its extended barrel upgrade. However, it seems they previously had a different design in mind for this upgrade, which we managed to find while looking through the files of the game. What we discovered was an alternate version of the barrel and slide model, which greatly deviates from the design shown in the retail game. For this version, the barrel appears to have a closer resemblance to the 1998 design, but includes a mil-spec Picatinny rail across the top and six ports along the sides to serve as an integral muzzle brake. Under the barrel, it features what appears to be an accompanied weight, but oddly this model features no front sight as it was likely not designed at this stage. Looking back to the slide, it features a unique slide profile, its own custom serrations, and a slimmed down safety on the right hand side. Besides these weapon parts, we did not find an alternate version of the lower frame, or an early 6 inch slide for the Lightning Hawk. 
but using the retail frame, we can imagine this is what the fully upgraded preliminary model was possibly meant to look like. Having showcased over 30 different unused weapons, upgrades, and ammunition types throughout the series, we hope to have brought forward new aspects and features found within the developmental stages of your favorite games. For now, Part 3 may mark the end of our Resident Evil Cut Gun series. If you have any leads for cut weapons you may have discovered, or ones we haven't listed so far, make sure to let us know, as we will be sure to continue the series if any new cut weapons arise in the future. So, that's it for even more weapons that were cut from the Resident Evil series. Be sure to check out our brand new Kendo Gun Shop merchandise. Our first two shirts and sticker designs are now available. You can find the link to the shop down below. If you'd like to help the Kendo Gun Shop expand its business past Raccoon City, share the video with your friends to help spread the word. Or feel free to leave us a tip over at our Patreon, link in the description. Make sure to leave us a comment on what guns from the series you'd like to see a video on next. And don't forget to come back and visit us at the Gun Shop for more content about the firearms of Resident Evil.